everyone, welcome to the channel. In this week's video, we're gonna be talking about the importance of repeat visits for your photography. And of course, we're talking about interior and architecture photography. For those of you who don't know who I am, my name is James Kerwin, and this, this is me. I'm an architecture and interior photographer from the UK that is now based in Istanbul. I love shooting heritage, abandoned places, relics, ruins, hidden gems and ghost towns, as well as off the beaten path locations all around the world. You can catch my content weekly, well, when life doesn't take over. So why don't you join me for the ride by subscribing, and you can also check out my website in the description below. So, I'm currently sat again in Adana, in the west of Turkey, which is basically two hours, 45 minutes from my home in Istanbul. And I've been here twice in two days, <laughs> which is, uh, yeah, not planned. In total, that's nearly, well, that's nearly 12 hours of driving in two days for the same location. And it's not like it's difficult. I'm gonna explain all of this and why I'm back here in this video. Let's get on it. not like this location is difficult to get inside. In fact, so easy, I walked in with my roller bag, my trolley. That was nice. <laughs> this is an old hammam in Adena in Turkey. And I actually came here yesterday, as I mentioned. I actually wrote this off as a terrible location. And I ran in, I had a few seconds to go before the sun dropped in the sky. I was actually trying to go to a different location. And I didn't realize this one existed, so I didn't get much time in here to photograph it properly. And as soon as I got back, I checked my images and they were awful. They were not very good. So in this episode, we're back the next day in, in my time. So in this video, I'm not talking about when you go to a location and you can't get access or you've not been able to find a key holder or obtain permission. I'm talking about when you've been to a location before, but you choose to go back, why you would do so and the benefits of doing so. Don't be fooled, lighting in architecture is just as important as it is in any other genre of photography. A dramatic scene lit well in architecture can really have a great impact on your photography. In fact, some of my best selling prints are all been where the light is amazing, there's stunning light rays, there's beams coming in, or there might be some smoke, or there's some element that looks attractive, a reflection on the floor, or nice light pattern on the windows, or colors being shown through glass, many, many reasons. And again, they're all reasons why you might then return to a location to pick up on some of these things. And on your first visit, you might not notice that those things even happen. Weather changes are kind of important in architecture, just like they are in landscape photography. And for me, I was trying to photograph just recently an external of a, an old mosque, had reflections in a, in a river, and it's got a missing minaret, it's been chopped off, and it looked great, the reflection, but the sunset was timid. So I might have to return there at a later date too. In fact, there's been many cool projects over the years where you return to the same location time and time again for seasonal changes, like for changes in the weather or time of year or the colors outside. This location wouldn't alter too much internally. So I knew coming the next day, the weather's not really a problem. The only difference would be is if I came here in midsummer, which would be pretty hot, but you might get light rays and beams coming into this location, which would look pretty cool. So if I do return here at a later date, keep your eyes peeled. It could be that you get better and your skills evolve and that means you want to revisit after many years. Maybe you'd do a better job. There's a palace that I photographed in Italy nearly 10 years ago now, back in 2014. And I'm dying for the day to be able to get back in there and photograph its four floors with the latest sort of skills and development of my personal knowledge of photography. 
going back at a later date can enable you to get better results and better images and do a better job overall of the interior. Of course, the importance of research is actually the main part of my job and it should be yours too. Photography research, especially with architecture, is actually the most time I probably spend in this job. I research a lot. I look at locations, I look for them first of all, and then I'm looking for local information. I'm looking for maybe has it been demolished or changed? And of course, what's the local uh, area like in terms of am I walking into danger? Is it gonna be a place where I'm gonna get interrupted regularly when I'm filming or photographing? These things you can research so much, but uh, as I proved yesterday, I researched this place to death. I thought it wasn't here anymore. It turns out, you know, I'd read articles that had been demolished. Turns out it's still here, it's looking beautiful. I'm not then just talking about the research in terms of finding the location itself. I'm also talking about the research of the area and the locals. What's the current state of affairs in the surrounding you know, preceding area? These are all really important. I talked a minute ago about interacting with locals and it might be that actually it's not just the local that's let you in or the person that's gave you permission. It could actually be externally as well to that. For example, there's been cases where I've had a door open on a church before in Cappadocia and the local public have walked on in and started interacting with me, disturbing my photography. And there's other cases where actually, for example, even yesterday here in this hammam, a guy just walked in fully dressed in a suit and just started chatting to me. Like, completely weird. It is a little bit of a weird area, not dangerous, but just weird. Border towns and cities tend to be a bit odd. There's a lot of through traffic, for example, and in here, that's exactly the case. 10 minutes I had probably before the light fell, and uh, that ate into that time even more. So it could be external factors, something that's really out of your control, and that is the point. And by the way, I'm never saying don't interact with locals. Be respectful, chat to them. In fact, I love that part about travel, but I'm really talking about the kind of disruption to your photography. I'm usually quite respectful. I normally say to somebody, look, can you move just for 10 minutes? I'll chat to you once I'm finished. I just need to get these images. I'm, I'm on a limited time set. And even with a language barrier, sometimes I'll just pop that into a Google Translate and just quickly explain that I've got limited time on site. Somebody just wandering into the location when you're filming or photographing, yeah, unfortunately that can happen. It might lead to you having to come back like me. You might be thinking to yourself, how has he picked out that composition so quick? And that is because yesterday, this is exactly where I was, trying to line something up when that guy came in. And this is what I messed up. I say messed it up, like my composition was off. I hadn't taken my time, I hadn't checked all the lines throughout. And more importantly than that, I hadn't focused in the right place either, which is quite crazy. My composition was also off a little bit as well. And it is here a little bit, but this time I've got way more time. I feel like I'm not under pressure. So I, I realized that if I bring my camera up a little bit more, my, my, my tripod, center column up, I'm gonna check my tilt shift and just make sure that when I shift it up, it doesn't get the wall. That's also a little bit of what I did yesterday, and it does. So just now, having the time to check things through, I realize that if I come further forwards, I can position myself and take time to nail that composition and eliminate that wall. And when I say the wall, it's just a tiny bit in my frame at the top when I shift the lens up. Because I've got more time, I can lower the ISO and the shutter speed can be a little bit longer and everything is fine. I've taken way more time already than I had yesterday to, to capture these shots. I'm now gonna check them, look at them, and I already like them. You wanna spend time playing with angles and compositions 
visualizing your shot. I knew this one worked from yesterday, so this one will be better in terms of a result from yesterday. But I didn't have any time to look at anything else. So let's go and do that now as well. I'm also keeping an eye on my gear and just make sure I'm moving it with me as I move through the rooms because I know the entrance is over there and yesterday I really couldn't keep an eye on it properly. It was also a mistake. Now we haven't got a lot of height here but the photograph, if I could pull it off, would be pretty cool. Um, Realistically, I'd need to be kind of a lot higher up. But I'm gonna try and attempt a shot, at least one. For this, of course, I need the, the 17 mil on the front, which is of course what I'm using because in here it's incredibly high. And that's where the 17 comes into its own really, is the height thing. Another thing that can happen to me quite a lot is I am sometimes on locations I feel a bit on edge, especially in these kind of locations. They're a bit, they can be a bit nerve wracking when you're on your own, you know. I'm here, I'm on my own. I don't know the city, I don't know the place. Maybe the research I've done online is not exactly correct. Maybe it's outdated, that kind of thing. Sometimes I feel like maybe I'm, because of the type of photography I do, that I'm not guarded enough against things that could happen surrounding me with me, my gear, and I've been incredibly lucky in touch wood that nothing like that has ever happened. However, it could, and you have to be on guard. And um, you're never gonna get good photographs when you're in that kind of mindset, in that kind of mood, the on edge mood, you know, as I would say, it's uh, not the best way to take images. I'm tweaking left, I'm right, I'm moving left, I'm shuffling in frame. I'm really gently messing around with the camera. It's not a lot, not a lot of changes. And you need to patience and you definitely don't need to be like messed about or things going wrong externally. You also need battery life, <laughs> which is all the points I've already made. And now I've finally framed it up, I can now do it. I think it now works. This is special right now. This is, so this, I would never have spotted this yesterday, by the way. I just wouldn't have spotted this image. I'll pop this one on the screen. It's a, it's a gem, it's a panoramic top and middle. I don't need too much of the bottom actually, just two would be enough. I'm gonna heavily underexpose it because there's a huge hole in the, in the roof. And we're gonna shoot that. ISO, I've boosted up a little bit, three brackets, but only because I don't want the light to be blown out and I wanna make sure I've captured the correct ones. And that is it. So what are your key takeaways here? Well, they go for both me and for you, really. You can plan and you can plan and you can plan and you can research until your heart's content. However, nothing beats the return visit, really, especially in architecture photography, and you shouldn't be frightened to do so, whether it be when you have improved over time, whether it be because of an external factor or simply because you couldn't gain access to the site. Either way, don't be frightened, and actually, it could lead to much better results. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I'm going to leave the rest of the images I take today on the screen, but they're not for the video, to be honest. I'm just going to wrap up. I'm going to get some shots, take my time without the pressure of the video, and uh, I'll pop those results on the screen. If you've got any comments, leave them below. Until next time, bye-bye for now.